for uh, those of you who don't know, I'm Bill Thompson. I'm the, <laughs> still getting used to it. I'm the new chair of the board of the City University of New York. Before I start, and, and, and there are a number of new members who are here or will be joining us in the next, uh, the next few days as members, but let me first express my appreciation, and I know that former Chair Benno Schmidt is not here right now. Let me express my appreciation to him, the former board members, and some who will be leaving us after this meeting. You've done a great job here, and it is something that has benefited not just the city, but the state this nation. And it is something that we can never say thank you too many times for. It really has been fabulous work. And the City University of New York has really, in, in, in spite of uh, ooh, a more recent article, um, has been fabulous, has made great strides. And I am honored to be the chair of this entity. So let me start out with that to say again what an honor it is for me to be here to welcome all of my colleagues on the board as well as everyone else who is here. Uh, I'm looking forward to, I'm not going to say as long a tenure as Benno, uh, because I don't know I have that many years in me. Uh, but at the same point, I'm really looking forward to working with each and every one of you. Um, the me this meeting of the Board of Trustees is now called to order. See, they, they've already provided the script and everything. They're trying to make sure I don't make mistakes in my first meeting. Please note that we'll be going into executive session at the end of this meeting to discuss personnel matters and collective bargaining. The board will reconvene in public session after the executive session. I'll now read the usual public notice. The meetings of the Board of Trustees of the City University of New York are open to the public, and the board welcomes the interest of those who attend. The public has ample opportunity to communicate with the board. Public hearings on the board's policy calendar are scheduled one week prior to the board's regular meetings, and members of the public who wish to communicate with the board are invited to express their views at such public hearings. Furthermore, the board holds additional public hearings each year in all of the five boroughs at which members of the public may also speak. In addition, written communications to the board are distributed to all trustees. The board must carry out the functions assigned to it by law and therefore will not tolerate conduct by members of the, policy of the public that disrupt its meetings. In the event of disruptions, including noise which interferes with board discussion after appropriate warning, I will ask the security staff to remove persons engaging in disruptive conduct. The university may seek disciplinary and or criminal sanctions against persons who engage in conduct that violates the university's rules or state laws which prohibit interference with the work of public bodies. <coughs> I'd now like to request that everyone take a moment to mute their cell phones or handheld devices, and I really would appreciate that. And at this point, I'm also going to make sure I've had that happen in the past where you ask everyone to mute their phones, and mine rings. It will not happen here. I'd also like, oh, as usual, CUNY TV is transmitting the public sessions of this afternoon's meeting of the Board of Trustees live on cable channel 75. This meeting is also being webcast live at www cuny.edu slash livestream, providing service wor worldwide via personal computers and mobile devices. The public sessions of this board will be available as a podcast within 24 hours and can also be accessed via the CUNY website. I'd like to extend a warm welcome to the new trustees, of which I am one, but who were appointed by Governor Cuomo. And again, I'd like to thank the governor for naming me to this board making me the chair, and confirmed by the New York State Senate on June 15th. Trustee Myra Linares Garcia, Trustee Robert Mojica, and Trustee Ken Sunshine. And a warm welcome to Trustee Lorraine Cortez Vasquez, who was appointed by Mayor de Blasio and was confirmed by the State Senate on June 16th. Trustee designates Fernando Ferrer and Sandra Wilkin will join the board on July 1st. They were also confirmed by the State Senate on June 15th. Welcome to Trustee and University Faculty Senate Chair Kay Conway, who I met at the Bronx Borough and Public Hearings last Monday. Congratulations on becoming a trustee on June 10th. I believe that I speak for all trustees, both new and incumbent, that it is a special privilege and honor to serve as trustees of the City University of New York. On a personal note, 
both of my parents graduated from Brooklyn College. And my dad is still going strong at 91 years old. He'll be 92 in uh, October. And I have to tell you, I haven't seen him smile and beam like this uh, in ages, in a long, long time. And uh, it, it is something, as they said, that is City University, uh, something that is very near and dear to my heart. Um, all of the new trustees are either CUNY college alumni or the children of alumni or have members of their families who are alumni. Like so many New Yorkers, we're proud of our connection to CUNY. We appreciate the enormous importance of the university to the vitality, economy, and growth of New York City and New York State. The chancellor and I, and I must admit, in a short period of time, I've become very fond of this chancellor. I have a lot of respect for him. He and I have been discussing an appropriate event in the early fall to recognize the contributions of outgoing trustees. However, for this meeting, I want to move the following resolution of appreciation. And this resolution of appreciation is to Benno Schmidt. Whereas Benno Schmidt was appointed by Governor George Pataki as chairperson of the Board of Trustees of the City University of New York in April of 2003, and he was reappointed to the board for a seven-year term in June of 2006. And whereas Mr. Schmidt oversaw the implementation of enhanced standards, assessment methods, accountability policies, and university-wide integration recommended by Mayor Giuliani's advisory task force on CUNY, which he chaired in the June 7, 1999 report, the City University of New York, an institution adrift, and resulting in reforms that provided the blueprint for elevating CUNY's academic profile and reputation. And whereas since his initial appointment as vice chairperson of the board in August of 99, Mr. Schmidt has served with exemplary dedication and distinction for nearly 17 years, playing a crucial role in the revitalization of the City University of New York. And whereas during his tenure, Mr. Schmidt, working with the board and the chancellery, oversaw the establishment of the Macaulay Honors College at CUNY, the CUNY School of Professional Studies, the CUNY Graduate School of Journalism, Gutman Community College, and the CUNY Graduate School of Public Health and Health Policy. And whereas Mr. Schmidt served as chairperson of the search committee, for a new chancellor and as chairperson of the search committee for the president of the Graduate School and University Center, among many leadership positions. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the members of the Board of Trustees of the City University of New York express their sincere thanks and deepest appreciation to Benno Schmidt for his exemplary leadership, tireless dedication, and outstanding service to the City University of New York. And be it further resolved that the Board of Trustees extends its best wishes for its continued success in all of its future endeavors. Uh, let me ask if there is a second uh, for this or any discussion on this item. So moved. Any discussion? <coughs> all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstentions? It's adopted. We now call on Trustee Wellington Chen to read the following resolution of appreciation. Bill the like the two. Resolution of appreciation, Philip A. Berry, whereas Philip A. Berry was appointed by Governor George Pataki in June 2006 as a member of the board of the City Uni University of New York. He was appointed vice chairperson of the board by Governor Elias Spitzer in June 2007, and he was reappointed in 2010 by Governor Ju David Patterson to a term that ended, that ends on June 30th, 2016. Whereas his initial appointment, Mr. Berry has served the university for a decade with enormous dedication and great distinction. And whereas during his tenure, Mr. Berry has devoted to the betterment of CUNY students, faculty and staff, while maintaining a high standard of fiduciary overview. And whereas Mr. Berry provided invaluable contributions to the university by helping to recruit effective leadership throughout CUNY, chairing two hostels, community college presidential search committees, the Mega Everts College Presidential Search Committee, and the Queens College Presidential Search Committee. He has served as vice chair of the search committee 
for a new chancellor, and he has served as a member of the College of Staten Island Presidential Search Committee and the Search Committee for Vice Chancellor for Faculty, Staff, and Administration and Lehman College Presidential Search Committee. And whereas Mr. Barry served as a member of the Board's Standing Committee on Fiscal Affairs and the Standing Committee on Faculty, Staff, and Administration, the Subcommittee on Audit, the Board's Executive Committee, and CUNY's Business Leadership Council and chair the CUNY Construction Fund. And whereas Mr. Berry inspired many to be better than they believe by keynoting at many academic venues, such as the National Corporate Hispanic Achievers Annual Leadership Summit at Baruch College, the Association of Community College Trustees Annual Leadership Congress in New York, and at numerous students' retreats. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the members of the Board of Trustees of the City, City of New York express their sincere thanks and deepest appreciation to Philip A. Berry for his energy, devotion, and outstanding service to the City University of New York, and be it further resolved that the Board of Trustees extends its best wishes for his continued success in all his future endeavors. Do I have a second? <laughs> uh, is there any discussion on the item? All those in favor? Aye. Any opposed or abstentions? I have mixed emotions of sadness and happiness now that my 10-year term on the Board of Trustees is coming to an end. I regret that my interactions with so many of the people that I admire and care for will not be as frequent. I will miss the students most of all. However, I will also miss the administrative staff, the chancellery, the presidents, the faculty, the security personnel, and my fellow trustees. I love you all. That is why my happiness really far exceeds that sadness. CUNY is more than an educational institution. It is a family and a pathway of progress for many. I have truly enjoyed and been personally enriched by being a part of this experience. In closing, I'm mindful that the legacy of my contribution really started before I was on the Board of Trustees, when I was a student at BMCC and at Queens College. And it will continue after this period, not just through my work as acting chair of the CUNY Construction Fund, but as an advisor, mentor, and perpetual resource. Finally, I welcome the new Board of Trustees. I, I welcome the chair, who I've worked with before in other incarnations. Um, goodbyes are never over, and I'm just so confident that he and some of the other trustees who I know who are here are going to do a fantastic job. They are made of the same fabric that I am, and I'm very confident of their commitment and also the professionalism that they are going to bring. I always feel that either life is a daring journey, a daring adventure, or it is nothing at all. I say thank you to all of you for this daring adventure. It fulfills me more than you will ever know. Thank you. I now call on Trustee Charles Shorter to read the following resolution of appreciation. Whereas Valerie Lancaster Beale was appointed by Governor George Pataki in June 2002 as a member of the board of the City University of New York, and she was reappointed in 2010 by Governor David Patterson to a term that ends June 30th, 2016. And whereas since her initial appointment, Ms. Lancaster Beale has served the university for 14 years with enormous dedication and great distinction. And whereas Ms. Lancaster Beale provided invaluable contributions to the university by helping to secure effective leadership throughout CUNY, chairing the New York 
chairing the York College Presidential Search Committee, the Baruch College Presidential Search Committee, the Medgar Evers College Presidential Search Committee, and as a member of the John Jay College Presidential Search Committee, the Graduate School and University Center Presidential Search Committee, the Search Committee for the Law School Dean, the College of Staten Island Presidential Search Committee, the City College Presidential Search Committee, the Bronx Community College Presidential Search Committee, the Search Committee for a New Chancellor, the Hostos Community College Presidential Search Committee, and the Search Committee for a New Executive Vice Chancellor and University Provost. And whereas Ms. Lancaster Beale chaired the Standing Committee on Faculty, Staff, and Administration, and served as a member of the Board's Standing Committee on Fiscal Affairs, and its Subcommittee on Investments, the Subcommittee on Audit, and the Board's Executive Committee, and whereas Ms. Lancaster Beale chaired the Chancellor's Initiative on the Black Male, wherein she worked with a panel of distinguished scholars in examining the status of black males in our society and ways of using education to improve the outcomes. And she led a task force charged with developing investment policies and procedures for CUNY's employee retirement plan. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the members of the Board of Trustees of the City University of New York express their sincere thanks and deepest appreciation to Valerie Lancaster Beale for her energy, devotion, and outstanding service to the City University of New York, and be it further resolved that the Board of Trustees extends its best wishes for her continued success in all of her future endeavors. Is there a second for that? Yes, ma'am. Uh, any further discussion on this item or uh, any, any other comments? Yes, Mr. Chair, I was honored to be asked to read this resolution, which is um, pretty straightforward, but I would like to add that I have known Valerie Lancaster Beale for longer than the term that she was appointed for, and she is one outstanding person, and we were fortunate to have her as a trustee, and I just wanted to add that to the record. Any other comments? Yes. I considered myself one of the new members and I don't know that I'm gaining seniority with tonight's meeting, but I have looked at um, Trustee Beale when I was appointed to fiscal affairs for help, for support, and for understanding what the fiscal implications are for the institution, and she's been more than a mentor, and I want to thank her. Any other comments? Uh, we vote. All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed or abstentions? Motion's approved. I'll now call on. Hmm? Um, I want to especially thank the um, board for that wonderful resolution. It's been probably the best 14 years of my life. I can't believe I'm so emotional. But um, I came to CUNY not an alum, not knowing very much about public education. But CUNY has taught me about what true public service means. And I am honored to have served as a trustee. I know the campuses will be glad when they won't see me coming on campus, because I think I've, every time I come on campus, it looks like it's a search committee going on time. <laughs> But it has been my pleasure to serve, and I intend to continue my service in whatever capacity I can. This is an enormously wonderful institution that is the true meaning of what to be a proud citizen and member of this society. And I want to spend out a special thank you to Vice Chancellor, I mean to Chancellor uh, Milken, and uh, in his guidance, and before him to Chancellor Goldstein, who, is, who was and continues to be a mentor. Congratulations to this wonderful board, and may you know that whenever I can be of service, I intend to. Congratulations and thank you.
I'll now call on Trustee Brian Oberfeld to read the following resolution of appreciation. Hi, resolution of appreciation uh, for Frida D. Foster. Whereas the Honorable Frida D. Foster was appointed by Governor George Pataki in June 2006 as a member of the board of the City University of New York. She was reappointed in 2013 by Governor Andrew Cuomo to serve a seven-year term. And whereas since her initial appointment, Ms. Foster served the university for a decade with enormous dedication and great distinction. And Ms. Foster diligently worked to advance access for historically under, underrepresented <coughs> groups. And whereas Ms. Foster provided invaluable contributions to the university by helping to secure effective leadership throughout CUNY. As a member of the search committee for Vice Chancellor for Student Affairs, Bronx Community College Presidential Search Committee, Megar Evans College Presidential Search Committee, and the Kingsborough Community College Presidential Search Committee. And whereas Ms. Foster served as chairman of the board's standing committee on facilities planning and management, as vice chair of the board's standing committee on student affairs and special programs, as a member of the board's standing committee on academic policy, programs, and research. Now, therefore be it resolved that the members of the board of trustees of the City University of New York express their sincere thanks and deepest appreciation to Frieda D. Foster for her energy, devotion, and outstanding service to the City University of New York. And be it further resolved that the Board of Trustees extends its best wishes for a continued success in all of her future endeavors. Thank you. Um, can I have a second for this item? Second. Second. Any comments? Discussion? Okay. All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstentions? Motion's approved. I'll call on Trustee Rita DiMartino <coughs> to read the following resolution of appreciation. Whereas the Honorable Hugo M. Morales was appointed by Governor George Pataki in June 2002 as a member of the board of the City University of New York, he was reappointed in 2007 by Governor Elliot Spitzer to a seven-year term and Whereas, since his initial appointment, Dr. Morales has served the university for 14 years with enormous dedication and great distinction. And, whereas, Dr. Morales provided invaluable contributions to the university by helping to secure effective leadership throughout CUNY as a member of the Hostos Community College Presidential Search Committee the Bronx Community College Presidential Search Committee, the Kingsborough Community College Presidential Search Committee, and the Lehman College Presidential Search Committee. <coughs> and whereas Dr. Morales diligently worked to advance access for historically underrepresented groups, <coughs> and whereas Dr. Morales served as vice chair and as a member of the board's standing committee on academic policy, programs and research, and as its vice chair, now therefore be it resolved that the members of the board of trustees of the City University of New York express their sincere thanks and deepest appreciation to Hugo M. Morales for his energy, devotion, and outstanding service to the City University of New York, and be it further resolved that the Board of Trustees extends its best wishes for his continued success in all of his future endeavors. Okay. Is there a second for this? Second of this. Any discussion on the item? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any, any <coughs> opposed or abstentions? Motion is approved. I now
now call on Trustee Una Clark to read the following resolution of appreciation. Whereas the, whereas the Honorable Carol Roman, Robles Roman was appointed by Mayor Michael Bloomberg in June 2002 as a member of the board of the City University of New York. She was reappointed in 2013 for a two-year term ending June 2015, and whereas since her initial appointment, Ms. Robles Roman has served the university for a decade with enormous dedication and great distinction. And whereas Ms. Robles Roman diligently worked to advance access to historically under, underrepresented groups, and whereas Ms. Robles Roman provided invaluable contributions to the university by helping to secure effective leadership throughout CUNY as a member of the City College Presidential Search Committee, um, Search Committee for the new Chancellor and Kingsborough Community College Presidential Search. And whereas Ms. Ro Ms. Robles Roman served as chair and as member and chair for the Board Standing Committee on Student Affairs and Special Programs, and as a member of the Board Standing Committee on Fiscal Affairs, and the Board's Standing Committee on Faculty, Staff, and Administration, now therefore be it resolved that the members of the Board of Trustees for the City University express their sincere thanks and deepest appreciation to Carol A. Robles Roman for her energy, devotion, and outstanding service to the City University, and be it further resolved that the Board of Trustees extend best wishes for her continued success and her future endeavors. Uh, do I have a second? Second. Any discussion on this item? Those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstentions? <coughs> the motion is approved. In appreciation to departing presidents, I'll now call, call on Trustee Valerie Beal to read the following resolution of appreciation. Whereas, Ricardo R. Fernandez has served as president of Herbert H. Lehman College since 1990 and is the longest serving among CUNY's current college presidents. And whereas throughout his tenure, Dr. Fernandez has expanded Lehman College's commitment both to educational excellence and to access to higher education for the economically disadvantaged and whereas directing the college growth and strategic direction, Dr. Fernandez has encouraged the development of new majors and degree programs, including an undergraduate degree in business, BBA, and graduate degrees in social work, public health, and business. And whereas under his leadership, there has been a 40% growth in online hybrid classes at the college since the spring 2013 semester. And as of the fall 2014 semester, nearly one quarter of all classes at Lehman College are either fully online, hybrid, or web enhanced. And whereas Dr. Hernandez has expanded Lehman College technology, infrastructure, and facilities to support programs in the arts and sciences, and well as the professions, including the Information Technology Center, 1999, a campus-wide fire security and communication system, 2003, a multimedia center, 2010, that supports programs in journalism and new media, and Science Hall, a 70 million state-of-the-art research and teaching to facility in 2012. And whereas Dr. Hernandez tenure, during Dr. Hernandez tenure, the college has increased the level of grants and contracts, extended its educational partnerships into the international arena, and become a major resource for the economic, cultural, and educational development of the Bronx, 
And whereas Dr. Fernandez has, during his tenure, chaired the boards of directors of prominent organizations such as the American Council on Education and the Hispanic Association of Colleges and University. And whereas Dr. Fernandez is the recipient of numerous recognitions, including one of the people to watch in higher ed in 2014 by Crane's New York Business Magazine, a Builder of New York, New York Award 2013 by the New York Immigration Coalition, the ASPIRA Education Award 2011, and the Latino Trend Center Award in 2010. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Trustees of the City University of New York expresses its heartfelt appreciation to Dr. Ricardo Fernandez for his exemplary dedication and distinguished leadership as president of Lehman College. A second. <laughs> a lot of second. Any discussion on this item? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed or abstentions? Motion is approved. Thank you. Um, <clears throat> when one thinks of retiring, uh, lots of ideas come to mind, and in my case, <clears throat> I thought about the idea of CUNY, which I consider to be a really grand experiment in higher education that has existed for more than a century and a half and still goes on. And everything that I have witnessed in my years as a member of the CUNY family gives me great confidence in the future of this noble institution as it continues to make significant progress every year in improving the lives of tens of thousands of New Yorkers, many of whom are immigrants or the children of immigrants. I consider it a privilege and a high honor to have served as president of Lehman College and to be part of the City University of New York, the largest urban university in the country. Over the years, I've been very fortunate to work with many talented colleagues, college presidents, provosts, CUNY vice chancellors, trustees, faculty and staff at all levels, across the university and in my home institutions, too many to mention individually, some of whom are here tonight. I thank them all for their unwavering support over the years through thick and thin. I extend my very best wishes to Chancellor Milliken and to past and present members of the Board of Trustees, and especially to you, my colleagues and fellow presidents, to CUNY, an institution that was once referred to metaphorically as a vessel, a drift, without clear purpose, smooth sailing, and continued success in the years ahead. Thank you. I now call on Trustee Judah Gribbets to read the following resolution of appreciation. Whereas Michelle Anderson, as Dean of the City University of New York School of Law since 2006, and whereas Dean Anderson has led the school through a period of great renewal and transformation in student success, facilities improvements, expanded programs, and national recognition. And whereas, under Dean Anderson's leadership, CUNY Law has strengthened its public interest mission and increased its academic standards. The school obtained pre-law magazine's ranking 
as the best public interest law school in the nation, continued its unbroken string of national top 10 U.S. News and World Report rankings for best clinical training, achieved Princeton Review's national top 10 rankings for best law professors and most diverse faculty, and earned the national jurist ranking as the second most diverse law school in the nation. And whereas the school has also earned membership in the Association of American Law Schools and received praise from the Carnegie Foundation for the Advancement of Teaching for its integration of theory and practice. And whereas Dean Anderson is a leading scholar on rape law, her articles have been published in the Boston University Law Review, George Washington Law Review, Hastings Law Journal, Rutgers Law Review, Southern California Law Review, and the University of Illinois Law Review, among others. And her article, Redefining What Rape Should Be Legally, was selected as the core text on rape law in criminal law conversations published by Oxford University Press in 2000. And whereas Dean Anderson designed and facilitated monthly leadership roundtables with some 20 CUNY college presidents to discuss and develop leadership best practices, and chaired the university-wide task force to establish a rigorous common core curriculum for CUNY undergraduate, undergraduate colleges. And whereas following a national search on May 2nd, 2016, <coughs> Chancellor James B. Milliken designated Michelle Anderson as the new president of Brooklyn College. Effective August 1st, 2016, with the unanimous approval of the Board of Trustees. So now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Trustees of the City University of New York Expresses, it, expresses its heartfelt appreciation to Michelle Anderson for her exemplary, exemplary dedication and distinguished leadership as the Dean of the CUNY Law School and for continuing to serve the university as president of Brooklyn College. Do I have a second? Second. 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 She's here. We'll get there. Those in favor? Yeah. Aye. Aye. Any opposed or abstentions? The motion is approved. And now <laughs> I'll just say something quickly, uh, perhaps. Thank you. Um, I, I want to thank you all for this resolution. I am proud of the work that we've done collectively and together at CUNY Law School. Uh, it's it's a it's a, an extraordinary uh, law school, and and it's been an honor to serve it. I'm also deeply honored to continue to serve CUNY, uh, an institution that I uh, that that beats in my heart, whose mission uh, beats in my heart. And uh, Brooklyn College is another very different, extraordinary institution that I am thrilled to be able to join and to begin to serve August 1st. Thank you. And now call, call on Trustee Barry Schwartz to read the following resolution. <clears throat> Thank you, Mr. Chairman. I'm advised that California has accepted back Dr. Gould with open arms, so she's not with us today but it's my honor to read this resolution of appreciation for Karen Gould. Whereas Dr. Karen Gould has served as president of Brooklyn College since 2009, and whereas Dr. Gould reviewed and implemented a retention and graduation success plan, and student retention, graduation rates, expanded international education, and internship opportunities soared 
under her leadership. And whereas Dr. Gould raised more than $30 million to launch the Barry R. Fierstein Graduate School of Cinema at the Steiner Studios at the Brooklyn Navy Yard, she oversaw construction of the Leonard and Claire Toe Center for the Performing Arts and completed construction of a new athletic field. And whereas Dr. Gould supported the formation of a new academic structure for the college with five recognized schools, business, education, humanities and social sciences, natural and behavioral sciences, and visual, media, and performing arts. And under her leadership, Brooklyn College hired 164 new full-time faculty, developed a new strategic plan, revised the college facilities master plan, and proceeded with technology infrastructure assessment and enhancement. And whereas an active member of the City University of New York Council of Presidents, Dr. Gould chaired the Council's Committee on International Programs, and she has received special commendations from the New York State Senate and the United Way for her numerous philanthropic activities. And whereas an internationally known scholar in the field of French Canadian literature, Dr. Gould is the co-author or co-editor of six books and more than 50 articles and essays on contemporary Quebec literature, Francophone women writers, and the modern French novel. She's been honored with both the Canadian Governor's General's International Award for Canadian Studies and the Donner Medal in Canadian Studies for research and professional contributions to her field. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the Board of Trustees of the City University of New York expresses its heartfelt appreciation to Dr. Karen Gould for her exemplary dedication and distinguished leadership as president of Brooklyn College. Do I have a second for that? So moved. Second. Any discussion on the item? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed or abstentions? Motion is approved. <laughs> in appreciation to departing administrators, I now call on Trustee Valerie Beal to read the following resolution. Mr. Chairman, it is my pleasure and honor to read this resolution to, on behalf of my friend and colleague, Alan Dobrin. Resolution of Appreciation of Alan Dobrin. <laughs> Whereas Alan Dobrin first joined the City University of New York CUNY in 2001, following an extensive and distinguished career in New York City government. And whereas Alan Dobrin has served with distinction as Executive Vice Chancellor and Chief Operating Officer of CUNY, overseeing institutional business operations and leading university-wide planning implementation implementation in key areas of responsibility, and whereas Alan Dobrin created, developed, and implemented the first university-wide long-term sustainable program to help to reduce greenhouse gas emissions, along with related energy efficiencies, and whereas chair of the university's Information Technology Committee, he was instrumental in establishing CUNY Alert, one of the nation's most comprehensive emergency alert systems. And whereas, Alan Dobrin created the CUNY Productivity Initiative, a program designed to generate more work at lower cost and to bring in additional revenue, creating savings in support of university programs and services. And whereas, Alan Dobrin implemented technology, technologically advanced information systems to help streamline processes and more efficiency, efficiently serve students, faculty, and staff. And whereas Alan Dobrin's finest talents were on display at essential times when leadership was most urgently needed, including during the aftermath of 9-11 and the rebuilding of borough of Manhattan Community College's Fitterman Hall and Hurricane Sandy, where he served CUNY the city and the state with extraordinary diligence and purpose. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the City University of New York expresses its deepest appreciation 
to Alan Dobrin for his outstanding services to the CUNY community. A second on this? Second. second. Before I put it to a vote, um, a point or just a quick point on discussion. Alan's been a friend for a number of years and happens to be somebody who um, I hold in, in highest regard. I, I, I will hold it against him forever that the moment that I got here, he decided to leave. Uh, but he is, and is the definition of a great public servant and has served in a number of positions and has served this city and this state and this nation with great distinction. And it is something that I will regret always in not having the opportunity to work directly with him as chair of this institution. But again, congratulations. So let me ask, uh, are, all those in favor or second first? Or second. 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 Any discussion? Yes. Yes, I'd like to say that I served with Mr. Dobrin at City Hall. And if he could stand me at City Hall, I think once I got here, he was figuring out a time when to exit <laughs> with great pride um, without offending me. But I will miss him very much. So I'm offended. OK. <laughs> Any other comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstentions? Motion is approved. So, yes. The mic. So, um, so both my parents are immigrants. Um, I am a product of this university. If there was no CUNY and Queens College, I have a very different life. Um, so to come in the middle of my career to CUNY um, was a, a rare privilege. It turned out to be the best 15 years of my life. Um, it's 10 years longer than I've ever been anywhere else. Um, but the reason for that, in addition to how committed I am to the mission, is there is nothing better in life than to do something that really matters. Do it for lots and lots of people. And do it with people who are honorable and decent and smart. Um, I had that privilege. Um, I got to do it with board members, <coughs> with the presidents who are in this room and not in this room, um, with three chancellors, um, with great faculty, great student leaders who have all become surrogate sons for me. Um, and it's really one of the great privileges of my life. Now, one of the nice things for me is as I leave with J.B. Milliken as the chancellor and Billy Thompson, who's chaired boards even tougher than this, um, I'm absolutely confident that this university is in great hands. And you're going to see in the next 15 years, you know, even more than you've seen in the last 15 years. So I just want to thank them for what they're both about to do for 15 years. Let me now call on Trustee Wellington Chen to read the following resolution. Be glad to. <coughs> resolution of appreciation for Gillian Small. Whereas Gillian Small has served as Vice Chancellor for Research at the City University of New York since 2008 and as University Dean for Research from 2003. And whereas Gillian Small has served as CUNY's top research executive, focused on recruiting distinguished faculty across many disciplines on supporting faculty research, scholarship, and entrepreneurship. And whereas she has successfully worked to obtain significant funding for facilities and implementation at both the college and university levels. And whereas she enhanced and expanded student involvement in numerous academic programs, increasing opportunities for a talented, ambitious, and diverse student population so crucial to their career and academic advancement. And whereas Julian Small supervised the development and opening of CUNY's Advanced Science Research Center, including the recruitment of prominent scientists and researchers to enable CUNY to significantly expand its capacity and partnership opportunities in priority areas of science research. 
and whereas Gillian Small successfully helped grow CUNY's intellectual property capacity, developing partnerships with other universities and research institutions, fostering relationships with private and governmental sources, and enhancing CUNY's contributions uh, to economic development of the city of the New York City and New York State. And whereas Gillian Small has been appointed as university provost and senior vice, uh, vice president for academic affairs <coughs> at Kelly Dickinson University, now therefore be it resolved that the City University of New York expresses its deepest appreciation to Gillian Small for her outstanding service to the CUNY community. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Any discussion or comments? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed <coughs> or abstentions? The motion is approved. Thank you. If I could just say it's been a privilege and an honor to, to lead the research efforts at, at CUNY for these last 14 or so years. So I want to thank uh, the chancellors, present and past, for um, giving that trust to me and to thank my colleagues. Um, both on the chancellery and at the campuses as well for, for working with me, especially when and my colleagues, when I've been asking them for resources, especially in facilities. But I want to say that at the heart of any great university is a, is a great faculty, and we have a wonderful faculty here at CUNY, so it's really been a privilege to help to promote their research and support their research, and also that of our students. And um, I will continue to watch their progress with pride. Thank you. And I call on Vice Chairperson Barry to read the following resolution. This is the resolution for Frank Sanchez. Whereas Frank Sanchez was served, has served as Vice Chancellor for Student Affairs for CUNY since 2011, and whereas Frank Sanchez successfully worked to advance campus services and programs while developing innovative <coughs> partnerships, public and private, aimed at increasing student success and degree completion, and whereas Frank Sanchez provided effective leadership in numerous areas, contributing to the improvement of the quality of CUNY student lives, including enhancing programs for veterans, disabled students, students in need of childcare, mentoring, leadership development, access to publicly available social services, counseling and referrals, health insurance, and more. And whereas Frank Sanchez oversaw the liaison relationship and collaborations with the University Student Senate to the benefit of the student body, and whereas Frank Sanchez developed a master plan aimed at improving the development and implementation of improved student services at the university, and whereas Frank Sanchez supervised both the development and augmentation of CUNY's Percy Ellis Sutton SEEK program and the Black Male Initiative, while working collaboratively with college-based components, and whereas Frank Sanchez has been appointed as president of Rhode Island College. Now, therefore, be it resolved that the City University of New York expresses its deepest appreciation to Frank Sanchez for his outstanding service to the CUNY community. Do I have a second? So moved. Any comments, discussion on this item? Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstentions? This motion is approved. <laughs> Congratulations to Chancellor Milliken on receiving the College Partner Award from the Kaplan Education Foundation on June 14th and the Outstanding Educator of the Year Award from Education Update on June 24th. I'm pleased to report that Trustee Joseph Awanji was honored by New York City Council member Inez Barron with a proclamation on June 17th for his leadership this year as chair of the University Student Senate. Well deserved, congratulations. <laughs> A fan club out there, way to go to us. Um, Congratulations to former trustee Frida Foster on her elevation to the position of vice chairperson of the Workers' Compensation Board. 
Gold, and I know we all wish her well. I'd like to report that the board held its annual Bronze Borough hearing on Monday, June 20. <coughs> Trustee Wellington Chen chaired the hearing and was also attended by Bronx Borough President Ruben Diaz, Jr., myself, Trustee Una Clark, University Faculty Chair and Faculty Trustee Kay Conway, and University Student Senate Chair and Trustee Joseph Awaji, members of the Chancellery and the Bronx College Presidents or their representatives. A summary of the proceedings has been circulated to the trustees and the chancellor's cabinet, and a transcript is available in the office of the secretary. I now call on Trustee Valerie Beal to announce college and faculty honors. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. City College Grove School of Engineering Distinguished Professor is one of eight international panel of experts selected to pick a winning design for the new Port Authority bus terminal. And Associate Professor of Economics and Business, Matthew Nagler, joined a select group of academics from institutions around the country as a member of the White House Social and Behavior Sciences team. Congratulations. Hunter College Distinguished Professor of English, Elizabeth Nunez, latest novel, a modern day take on Shakespeare's King Lear, set in Trinidad, Barbados, and Jamaica, was featured in the May issue of O Magazine under the column, 10 Titles to Pick Up Now. Congratulations. Borough of Manhattan Community College Provost, Karen Wilkes, was selected by the Aspen Institute for its inaugural class of the Aspen Presidential Fellowship. Congratulations. LaGuardia Community College Professor and Director of the LaGuardia and Wagner Archives, Richard Lieberman, was elected a fellow of the New York Academy of History by the Standing Fellows of the organization. And LaGuardia Associate Professor of English, LaRose Paris, was honored by the Caribbean Philosophical Association with the Nicholas Gillian Outstanding Book Award for her recent book, Being a Part, Theoretical and Existential Resistance in Africana Literature. Congratulations. Mr. Chairperson, that concludes my report. Thank you. Thank you, Trustee Beal. I now call on Trustee Rita DiMartino to announce student and alumni honors. Thank you. City College, uh, Colin Powell School for Civic and Global Leadership Anthropology major, Cheyenne Marcano, received a summer internship for research at the Smithsonian Anacostia Community Museum. And five City College undergraduates are participating in a five-week program at Memorial Sloan Kettering Cancer Center to work on translational cancer health disparities throughout New York City. They are Maria Shanaim, Christian Kadima, Angel Morquecho, Valeria Serrano, and Emily Zank. Congratulations. Kingsborough Community College 2016 Journalism Graduate and Scepter Editor-in-Chief <coughs> Michelle Yeadon was chosen as one of 50 students nationwide to take part in the inaugural College Reporter Day at the White House last month. Congratulations. Baruch College School of Public Affairs Dean David Birdsell was honored by city and state with its first 50 over 50 awards for his extensive experience in government, labor, business, and politics. Congratulations. Borough of Manhattan Community College science major Aurela Dragani recently received a Jack Kent Cooke Foundation undergraduate transfer scholarship. And Panthers soccer player Christian Pagode was honored for being the top student athlete in the CUNY Athletic Conference. Congratulations. LaGuardia Community College student Amir Hassan was selected for a 2016 student fellowship by the Pulitzer Center for Crises Reporting and will travel to Manchester, England to do investigative reporting on countering Islamophobia. And LaGuardia's 2016 commencement class speaker and Phi Theta Kappa member, Rachel Chambers, 
was selected to the USA Today All New York Academic Team. Congratulations. Baruch College students Amit Guten, MBA class of 2017 and 2016 graduate Or Iskovich won the first annual campus pitch competition, a joint initiative of the World Jewish Congress and the Israeli Consulate in New York. They received a $5,000 award to launch their Faces of Israel photo gallery. Congratulations. Mr. Chairperson, that concludes my report. Thank you, Trustee B. Martino. A list of grants and gifts received by the university subsequent to the May 2nd, 2016 meeting is available around the table and in the trustees' meeting books. Let me call on Chancellor Milliken to present an update of recent activities. Thank you, Mr. Chair, and welcome to everyone. It used to be that I was the newest face at this table. <laughs> no longer the case, so I'm especially happy to see all of you here. This is a special gathering for a number of reasons. First and foremost, in my view, the new contracts we recently settled with our union partners. Second, new trustees joined the board for their first meeting, uh, including a report from the executive committee on the naming of new presidents and deans, this is the first time we've reconvened since an exciting commencement season, really highlighted by the appearance of First Lady uh, Michelle Obama at City College. But for those of you who attended the commencement, you know what I mean when I say that all of the speakers and the students did a tremendous job and were similarly uplifting. Each in its own way told the story of CUNY, emphasizing our diversity, our accessibility, and our quality. It became clear in speech after speech why those characteristics have made us such a strong institution and why CUNY's mission is so special. Now, it's no news to the board members and my colleagues uh, how difficult and how long we were involved with settling contract negotiations and the persistence required and the hard work required on all sides. And I want to thank today the leadership of our unions, as well as my senior staff, particularly Vice Chancellor Silverblatt, for remaining focused, committed, and ultimately positive that we could find common ground. We are presenting to our trustees what I believe are fair agreements for our faculty and staff, fair agreements that they deserve after having gone far too long without contracts. CUNY's faculty and our staff are essential partners work that we have done and the work that we have in front of us. The result will be that our students are better prepared for the most promising opportunities to face them. We have for information in today's agenda a new master plan that grew out of a consultative process that is also leading to a new strategic plan. This strategic plan is nearing completion and lays out what I believe will be a thoughtful, energetic, and positive vision for CUNY goals and strategies of the plan will pursue deeper connections with education for college, within the university, with the private not-for-profit sectors outside the university. So at the same time that we are pursuing these new directions, we'll be joined by new leadership, bring new ideas and energy. Michelle Anderson, as you have heard, moving from the law school, where she was a very successful dean, becoming the new president of Brooklyn College. We're delighted to have Jose Cruz join us as president at Lehman College with uh, big shoes to fill. Uh, and Mary Lou Bielek, who spent much of her career at the law school, is now returning as dean. And we're pleased to welcome this outstanding new leadership to our campus. With their help and with the help of others here and across our colleges. We're well positioned to complete and implement the new plans, the strategic framework and the master plan. We believe our strategies will lead to improved graduation rates at our community colleges and our senior colleges by scaling successful support programs and increasing the integration of our colleges to ease the movement of students from one school to another as needed. We'll create more and better collaborations between our colleges and other institutions and universities. We use our unique location to develop innovations to improve the urban condition, connect with other 
major urban universities around the world to share knowledge and impact. We will expand educational opportunities for adult learners eager to advance careers and change careers. We'll add significantly to our offerings of online courses which will expand our reach to a larger pool of students. And we'll significantly expand our efforts to obtain support from private donors to fund programs in line with their missions. It's an exciting, I think, set of objectives, but it's also a bittersweet because of the great help that we have had over the last many years. At the same time that we are saying goodbye to two outstanding presidents who are here with us, saying goodbye to three exceptional vice chancellors who have made invaluable contributions to the overall management and success of CUNY. I had intended to say a few words about each of these vice chancellors who were key parts of my staff. But uh, in the wake of the <laughs> impressive uh, and uh, uh, extensive uh, list of resolutions this evening, I'm simply going to say this. <coughs> Jillian, good luck in New Jersey. <laughs> Frank, good luck in Rhode Island. <laughs> Alan, keep your helmet on while cycling. <laughs> <laughs> all right, I've got to get past all the stuff that I was going to say about Alan. All right. <laughs> I'll say it tomorrow night. Um, so it's a bittersweet but exciting time at CUNY. We look forward to working with the new trustees, the incumbent trustees, the college leadership, and our faculty and staff to continue to make CUNY the model of the 21st century urban university. Thank you, Mr. Chair. That's my report. Let me thank, before we move on, let me thank the chancellor and his staff for the work on a new contract. Uh, it, it would have been great for me to be able to say that the new board members who were named, that it happened almost the time that we were appointed or, or confirmed, but that wouldn't be accurate. This is the result of hard and focused work on your part, on the part of your staff, on the part of union leadership, and let me also thank the governor's office for their involvement in getting this done. It provides a stability that we need to move forward. Uh, and I think it is just, uh, as I said, it, it is something that, uh, that had been out there for an extended period of time. I don't think people realized the hard work that was done on part of you and your staff to do this. So, you know, congratulations, Yeoman's work. Thank you so much. Thank you so much on this. And on the master plan, uh, and, and we'll see this in, in one other item later, uh, the chancellor, and, and let me thank him for his leadership on this. Uh, in kind of pulling back for just a few months to give the new members of the Board of Trustees an opportunity, and a lot of work had been done, but to give us an opportunity to be able to go through this, to be able to engage in discussion, to be able to, uh, you know, to be able to play constructive roles, or to be able at least to have the conversations that will give us the opportunity to be able to vote intelligently on something that we're going to have to live with for a period of years. And not every person would have done that. So again, Chancellor, let me thank you for your understanding. Let me thank you for your leadership on those items. Um, <coughs> let me now, let's see. item one, following items. Uh, the, the one, Chancellor's University Report for June 27, 2016, including addend, uh, addenda and errata. Table ask for a second. Do we have a second? Second. Second. Any discussion on this? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed or abstentions? Items approved. Item two, approval of the minutes of the regular board meetings and executive session of May 2, 2016. Um, you'll find a copy of the draft minutes for the regular board meetings and executive session in your meeting books. Do I have a second on this item? So move. Is there any discussion? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed or abstentions? M2 is approved. Abstention? One abstention noted. Item number three, Committee on Fiscal Affairs. Let me call on Committee Chair Barry Schwartz to present the following items. Thank you, Chair Thompson. <clears throat> 
The uh, Committee on Fiscal Affairs and the Subcommittee on Audit met in a joint session on June 6, 2016, at meetings which were chaired by Trustee Valerie Beal, as I was unable to attend. Uh, let me just say, by matter of personal privilege, um, <clears throat> in my two years here sitting on this board, I haven't seen a more dedicated, a more devoted, and more diligent trustee than Valerie Beal. And Valerie, uh, we and all of us, and me particularly, are going to miss you, and thank you. After approval of the minutes of April 4, 2016, the Fiscal Affairs Committee uh, addressed the policy items on our agenda tonight and approved the following resolutions. The first is calendar item 3A. It is a resolution requesting that effective fall 2016 with the inauguration of the Doctor of Education in Instructional Leadership Program at the Hunter College School of Education. The Board of Trustees adopts a tuition schedule that will have tuition set at $210 above the regular master's tuition level. This will be the first doctor of education program at the university. With master's level tuition for fall 2016 at $425 a credit, the effective tuition rate in the fall 2016 at the inception of this doctoral program will be $635 credit for resident students and $990 per credit for non-resident students. President Jennifer Rabb addressed the committee and provided additional information about this new program offering. Hunter College will continue to provide any financial aid assistance available to eligible students. Mr. Chairman, I move the approval and adoption of calendar item 3A. The second. Second. Any discussion on the item? Those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Motion is approved. <clears throat> Calendar item 3B is a resolution requesting that the Board of Trustees adopts a schedule of tuition charges and program fees for students in the Executive Business Doctorate EBD program leading to the Doctorate in Professional Studies degree at Baruch College, effective with the fall semester 2016. The schedule of tuition and program fees is detailed in the resolution provided to all of us. As with the previous item, this is a new program being offered at CUNY. Baruch College has designed this curriculum for experienced executives who have already completed a graduate degree and I've had conversation with uh, President Wallerstein and Dean Huss, and they are confident there is a strong, vibrant market for this degree here in, in uh, Manhattan and elsewhere. Mr. Chairman, I move the approval and adoption of calendar item 3B. Do I have a second? Yes. Discussion on this item? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? The item's approved. And lastly is uh, calendar item 3C, which is a resolution requesting that the Board of Trustees authorize the university to choose a virtual bookstore company to provide a virtual online substitute to the brick and mortar bookstore at some or all of the colleges, and to support the educational mission of the university by providing necessary textbooks and related course materials to students at the lowest possible cost in exchange for the payment of commission on sales. The term of the contract ex is expected to be five years with one three-year and one two-year renewal option as determined in the university's best interest. A total of 13 of our colleges have adopted into the first cohort of participation in this request for proposal and any and all other colleges may choose to participate at a later date. This arrangement will not involve the expenditure of any tax levy funds. Mr. Chairman, I move the approval and adoption of calendar item 3C. Do I have a second? So moved. So, any discussion on this item? All those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? The item's approved. <clears throat> With no more items on the agenda for the Fiscal Affairs Committee, the meeting was adjourned and the subcommittee on audit was convened. 
and proceeded to approve its minutes of February 1, 2016. And following the approval of those minutes, the subcommittee addressed the one item on the policy calendar, a resolution calling for the approval of the fiscal year 2016 audit plan. After a presentation by KPMG, our auditors, of this year's audit plan, the subcommittee approved the resolution and authorized the engagement letter to be signed by Vice Chancellor for Budget and Finance, Matthew Sapienza. Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report. Thank you, Trustee Schwartz. Thank you. Item number four, uh, Committee on Academic Policy Programs and Research. Uh, and one of the things, again, um, let me thank Chancellor Milliken for his leadership uh, on holding off on the master plan. Well done, Chancellor. Thank you so much. Let me now call on Trustee Chen to present the following items. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. At its June 6, 2016 meeting, the committee approved the following policy matters. Calendar item number 4A, John Jay College. Master of Arts in Human Rights. The MA in Human Rights is an interdisciplinary curriculum that will prepare students for a variety of rapidly growing professions in the nonprofit, government, and private sectors, inclu including those in development, international affairs, humanitarian aid, corporate social responsibility, and diplomacy and governance. Calendar item number 4B, Lehman College, Master of Science in Organizational Leadership. This program will prepare graduates to assume various leadership positions within fields of higher education, not-for-profit, corporate, and healthcare. The program will provide opportunities for high-quality, accessible, and affordable graduate leadership education for residents in the Bronx and surrounding areas. Lehman will be the only CUNY institution to offer this degree. Calendar item number 4C, New York City College of Technology. Bachelor of Science in the Business and Technology of Fashion. This innovative program will combine basic courses in accounting and marketing with courses in merchandising, textiles, and e-commerce, providing graduates with a valuable set of skills and knowledge relevant to the fashion industry, one of the larger employers in New York City. Calendar item number 4D, Lehman College, AS in Therapeutic Recreation. This program aims to equip students with the necessary skills and competencies required to function efficiently as recreational therapists and recreational leaders and assistants. It was developed with the vision of providing a first degree program for students who have interest in an allied field career. The program has an articulation agreement with the bachelor's degree in therapeutic recreation at Lehman College. Calendar item number 4E, Lehman College Establishment of Department of Computer Science. Upon approval of the establishment of the Department of Computer Science as a freestanding entity, Lehman College will remain the Department of Mathematics and Computer Science as the Department of Mathematics. The college believes that these actions will result, will allow for more focused faculty recruitment and scholarship as well as curricular development in each of these disciplines. <coughs> Item 4A through 4E were approved by the committee and I recommend their approval by the board. Do I have a second? Second. Discussion on these items? Comments? All those in favor? Aye. Aye. <coughs> those opposed? Any abstentions? The items are approved. Uh, Trustee Chen, do you have anything further to report? No, con that concludes my report, Mr. Chairman. Thank you so much. Thank you. Item number five, Committee on Faculty, Staff, and Administration. Let me call on Committee Chair Valerie Beal to present the following items. Mr. Chair, I will now present for the Board's approval the items that the Committee for Faculty, Staff, and Administration considered at its meeting on June 6. <coughs> Calendar items 5A and 5B are naming opportunities at two colleges, which I will present together. I am pleased to report that these namings reflect monetary gifts to the university in the amount of $2,250,000. They are the Freda B. Linderman Music Chair at Hunter College and the LaBrenda Garrett Nelson, class of 75, Children's Center at John Jay College of Criminal Justice. 
The Committee on Faculty, Staff, and Administration has reviewed these matters and is pleased to recommend their approval. Mr. Chair, I present items 5A and 5B for the Board's consideration. Do I have a second? Comments? Those in favor? Aye. 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 Those opposed? Any abstentions? The items are approved. Thank you. Item 5C amends the governance plan of the CUNY Law School to augment the composition of its administrative screening and review committee, which is responsible for reviewing proposed appointments, reappointments, titles, and salary recommendations for administrative positions. The proposed amendments increase the number of members of the committee from three to five and provide that at least one member be a classified staff member to add a valuable perspective. The amendments also will provide for two-year appointments to the committee. The Board Committee on Faculty, Staff, and Administration recommends approval of this matter. Mr. Chair, I present items 5C for the Board's consideration. Do I have a second? Comments? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Those opposed? Any abstentions? That item is approved. Mr. Chair, I am now pleased to present item 5D, which designates three new distinguished professors. The committee has reviewed each of their outstanding appointments and enthusiastically recommends their approval. They are Scott Burhan, Distinguished Professor of Music at the Graduate Center, William Hellreich, Distinguished Professor of Sociology at the City College of New York, and Ben Lerner, Distinguished Professor of English at Brooklyn College. Mr. Chair, I'm pleased to present these appointments for the Board's approval. I am delighted to tell you that two of our new Distinguished Professors are here with us today. I would like to invite President Lisa Krakow to introduce Professor Helmrich, followed by Provost Tramontano, who will introduce Professor Lerner. Thank you, Trustee Beal. And thank you so much for your service on the board. Thank you. Really, thank you. It is truly a pleasure and a privilege today to introduce to you Professor William Helmreich as a distinguished professor. Bill has established an international reputation as a leading scholar of sociology and ethnography. He's highly regarded in his field and has been a member of the City College faculty for over 40 years and a member of the CUNY Graduate Center since 1978, serving as college and university with distinction. He is also a permanent senior fellow at Yale University. Bill is an amazing scholar. Uh, he's the author of 14 books. He received his PhD in sociology from Wash U in St. Louis and was a former Woodrow Wilson fellow. But you are an amazing and unique man, a wonderful faculty member, a wonderful community member. You have published a book to me as a Brooklynite and a true Brooklynite, raised and born in Brooklyn, a Brooklyn College alum, um, that really gets to the essence of the ethnography, the changes in communities, and the beauty of each and every community of New York City. Bill published his book, The New York Nobody Knows, Walking 6,000 Miles in the City, and was the winner of the 2015 Guides Association of New York City inaugural prize for outstanding achievement in book writing, as well as many other book awards and acknowledgments. You wore out nine pairs of shoes in that one book. <laughs> Nine pairs of shoes. And he was now um, contracted with Princeton Review to do another five books, one on each of the boroughs. As a person who grew up in New York City, listening to you and having had the privilege of spending some time talking to you about my old neighborhood, which is Sunset Park, Brooklyn, I realized that you, by your journeys, and you'll talk, I hope, a little bit about how you got there through your only family connection and how your father developed this passion in you. But you've been able to gain insights and to really give me insights as to about my own neighborhood and the people in my neighborhood and how the neighborhoods have changed in such <coughs> wonderful ways. 
And I really recommend to all of you to take a look at um, CBS. It was Sunday morning, right? The show on CBS, Sunday morning. They had an, a segment that Bill walked through the neighborhoods. And it was, I said, like one of those cool drinks of water on a hot August day when the streets are really steaming. It's so wonderful. It's a privilege. I feel really humbled to have you as our faculty, so I thank you, and I'm really thrilled to present Bill to you today. Well, thank you, President Coico, for the wonderful and kind words and uh, for your support. I came to City College 43 years ago from Yale University and never looked back. I've loved every minute of the experience. I love writing and research. I love teaching. And as an immigrant, I really feel for all the students that I've had the privilege of teaching for these last four plus decades. I came to do this book on New York because every weekend my father played a game with me called Last Stop. The idea was to go to the last stop on the train and walk around the neighborhood. When we ran out of last stops in the 212 mile system, we went to the second to last stop, to the third to last stop. I learned a great deal, and this kindled the spark in me that led to my doing this book some 35 years later. I have to say that there's a real synergy between doing a book like this and being part of the CUNY system. In both cases, you meet people from every walk of life. And in both cases, you meet people from so many different countries in the world. It didn't even feel like work. It was really, really a joy to do this project. And I want to express my appreciation and gratitude to CUNY for, through promoting me to uh, distinguished professor, allowing me to have the time so that I can continue doing these next five books, one of which on Brooklyn will come out in September. And at the same time, I meant what I said before about loving teaching. I intend to continue teaching. And I am truly, truly grateful to have had this opportunity to be with the college. If I had it to do all over again, I'd do it exactly the same way. Thank you very much. Good evening, Mr. Chair and members of the board. We're not in Brooklyn, but we're in Kansas, not Nebraska. I'm very proud and privileged to be able to present to the board Ben Lerner. Ben Lerner is a poet, a novelist, a literary critic, a visual arts critic. Ben is a young writer, but it has the promise for his work to be enduring and transformative. Since Ben's appointment to the English department in our MFA program in creative writing, Ben has sustained a prodigious pace of writing and publishing creative works that draws wide national and international acclaim. In Ben's young and prolific career, he has been nationally and internationally recognized for his quality, timeliness, and originality. Ben has been the recipient of a Fulbright, a Howard Foundation Fellowship, a Guggenheim Fellowship, and more recently, a MacArthur Foundation Fellowship. Ben's poetry includes works such as Mean Free Path, The Angel of Yore, which was a finalist for the National Book Award and the Northern California Book Award. His sonnets, including the Lichtenberg figures, won the Hayden Carruth Award and was chosen by the Library Journal as one of the year's 12 best poetry books. Ben's first novel, Leaving the Ochoa Station, won the Believer Book Award and was a finalist in the Los Angeles Times Book Award for First Fiction and the New York Public Library's Young Lions Award. Excerpts from Ben's second novel, 
10-04 won the Terry Southern Prize from the Paris Review, and his forthcoming work include an artist book, Blossom, and the monograph, The Hatred of Poetry. Ben's essays on art and literature have been published in Art in America, Freeze, Harper's, The New Yorker, The London Review of Books, and The Los Angeles Review of Books. I know I speak for President Karen Gould that it has been a privilege to have Ben as a member of our faculty for the last six years, and we are very, very glad that he is going to be able to receive the rank of distinguished professor, and he will be a linchpin for Brooklyn College as it moves forward. Thank you. Uh, thank you, Bill. <clears throat> I'm grateful to everyone at Brooklyn College for their support of my work, um, to the outgoing President Gould, to the chair of my department, Ellen Tremper, to the faculty that make it such a lively place to work. As Bill mentioned, I'm from Kansas. I grew up in Topeka, Kansas, but I come from a CUNY family. Uh, my mom grew up in Flatbush. She went to Midwood. She took her first courses at Brooklyn College. My parents met in the PhD program. Uh, at CUNY, um, and many, a startling proportion really of the writers who I most admire, the people who made me want to be a writer, have taught or have studied at Brooklyn College or other CUNY institutions. Um, so I feel honored to teach at a place that crackles with all the intelligence and diversity of the borough. Um, my job is ultimately talking to our students, both undergraduate and graduate students, about their relationship to language. And I learn so much from them, from those conversations, that I feel like any recognition of my writing is a recognition of our students. So I'm very grateful to them um, today, and I'm very grateful to all of you. Thank you very much. Mr. Chair, I will now make my final report to the board on the work of the CUNY Defined Contribution Investment Oversight Task Force. Um, Trustee Beal, before you do that, oh, um, I'd entertain a, we still have to approve. Yes. Yes. Uh, so. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> do I have a second to the motion? So moved. Second. Comments? Those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? The item is approved. And now I will make my final report. <laughs> In 2014, the board established the CUNY Defined Contribution Investment Oversight Task Force under the auspices of the Committee on Faculty, Staff, and Administration. The task force was co-chaired by myself and former trustee Terrence Martell and comprised of members from the offices of Human Resource Management, Budget and Finance, and the General Counsel. Assisted in, ex in expert consulted CAMEC Retirement Group, we perform an extensive review of the university's optional retirement plan, ORP, and the tax deferred annuity, TDA plans, together the plans. The goal of our review was to make recommendations to align the plans with industry best practices, and I am pleased and proud to say that we have accomplished our task. An enormous amount of work was achieved by the task force over the past two years. On the table for your review is a report of our accomplishments. Among those are the board's adoption of an investment policy statement, a revised ORP plan document, establish of revenue credit accounts, designation of TIA as sole record keeper for the plans, approval of a streamlined array of best in class investment options for plan participants, including for the first time the inclusion of a WMBE and non no carbon option managers. Perhaps the task force's most significant accomplishment is its negotiation of lower administrative fees charged to plan participants, which have been reduced by approximately 1.6 million a year and will continue to be renegotiated. I am very proud of these to say that these efforts make CUNY a model of productivity, 
efficiency, and leadership in this area. It has been my great honor to co-chair the CUNY Defined Contribution Investment Oversight Task Force. I want to extend a special acknowledgement to CAMIC Retirement Group who are with us today for their leadership and assistance on this project. The task force has completed its work and now recommends that the Vice Chancellor for Human Resource Management head a retirement plan administrative working group to oversee implementation of the approved changes to the plans in communication and communicate with the FSA committee on an ongoing basis. The working group will continue to report periodically on its efforts and accomplishments to the committee and thus to the board uh, uh, and to the entire board. Mr. Chair, that concludes my report. Trustee Beal, let me thank you again for your service to this board. It is, you've become to some extent uh, a bit of a legend uh, to those who weren't on this, weren't on this board, uh, just for the work that you have done and for your commitment to this institution. And as they said, if you, when I've asked what person you know, has given more of themselves as a member of this board, your name has been unanimously mentioned. So again, let me thank you for your service and thank you for this work. Thank so you. well done. It's been my honor and pleasure. Uh, let me call item number six, Committee on Student Affairs and Special Programs. Let me call on committee member Rita DiMartino to present the following items. Mr. Chairman, the Committee on Student Affairs and Special Programs has six items for the board's approval. The committee met on June 6, 2016 and approved calendar item 6A, B, C, D, E, and F. Calendar item 6A, approval of the Medgar Evers College Student Activity Fee Increase and establishment of a part-time student activity fee. Be it resolved that the Board of Trustees of the City University of New York approves the Medgar Evers College Student Activity Fee Increase and the establishment of a part-time student activity fee. An explanation for the recommended fee increase is included in the calendar. Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report on calendar item 6A. Mr. Chairman, I ask for a vote on this calendar item. Do I have a second? Second. Any discussion? Those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Abstentions? The item's approved. Thank you. Calendar item 6B, approval of the Lehman College student activity fee increase. Be it resolved that the Board of Trustees of the City University of New York approves the Lehman College student activity fee increase. An explanation for recommended increase is included in the calendar. Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report on calendar item 6B. Mr. Chairman, I ask for a vote on this calendar item. Do I have a second on this item? Second. second. Any discussion? Those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? The item's approved. Calendar item 6C, approval of the Brooklyn College Student Activity Fee Increase, <coughs> College of Liberal Arts and Sciences Day Session. Be it resolved that the Board of Trustees of the City University of New York approves the Brooklyn College Student Activity Fee for the College of Liberal Arts and Sciences Day Session. An explanation for the recommended fee increase is included in the calendar. Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report on calendar item 6C. Mr. Chairman, I ask for a vote on this calendar item. Do I have a second on item 6C? Second. Discussion? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Abstentions? The item's approved. Calendar item 6D, approval of the Kingsborough Community College 
student activity fee increase. Be it resolved that the Board of Trustees of the City University of New York approves the Kingsborough Community College student activity fee increase. An explanation for the recommended fee increase is included in the calendar. Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report on calendar item 60. Mr. Chairman, I ask for a vote on this calendar item. Do I have a second? Second. Discussion? Those in favor? Aye. 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 Opposed? Any abstentions? Item 6D is approved. Calendar item 6E, approval for the CUNY School of Professional Studies establishment of a student activity fee. Be it resolved that the Board of Trustees of the City University of New York approves the CUNY School of Professional Studies student activity fee. An explanation for the establishment of the part-time fee is included in the calendar. Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report on calendar item 6E. Mr. Chairman, I ask for a vote on this calendar item. Do I have a second? Second. Discussion? Those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? Item 6E is approved. Thank you. Calendar item 6F, approval of the City University of New York revisions to the board eligibility for services as members and officers of student governments and the university student senate to apply to other student leadership positions. Be it resolved that the Board of Trustees of the City University of New York approves the guidelines for eligibility for service as members and officers of student government and the university student senate and other student leadership positions effective spring 2017. An explanation for the recommended guidelines is included in the calendar. Mr. Chairman, that concludes my report on calendar item 6F. Do we have um, a second? Second. Any, any discussion? Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Extensions? Item 6F is approved. Thank you. Are there any other uh, items? No, I do not have anything else to report. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thank you so much. Item number seven, Committee on Fa Facilities Planning and Management. Let me call in Committee Vice Chair Brian Oberfeld to present the following items. Mr. Chairman, the Board of Trustees Committee on Facilities Planning and Management considered three items at its meeting on June 6, 2016. These items are listed in this board meeting as calendar items 7A through 7C. 7A, Hunter College, replacement of air handling units for the North Building. 695 Park Avenue, New York. The Board of Trustees requests the City University Construction Fund to execute a purchase order with the train company for design and construction services to replace two air handling units and related control system located on the 11th floor of the Hunter Campus North Building. Item 7B, Mega Evans College, installation of phase one of the security system upgrade for multiple buildings. The Board of Trustees requests the City University Construction Fund to execute a purchase order of a security company to be named for design and construction services to upgrade the existing security systems in multiple campus buildings. Item 7C, Brooklyn College, transfer of Brooklyn College Student Services Corporation building to the City University of New York. To transfer the BCSSC building to the City University of New York and subject to the approval of the New York State Attorney General or the New York State Supreme Court, the board approves the transfer of the right title and interest of the student center to CUNY. I hereby request your approval of these calendar items. Do I have a second on this? Second. Any discussion? Yes. I would like to 
is there a way to explain um, the, the student facilities building, um, why it was never a part of the campus, and is there an explanation for the transfer that I can better understand? Judy, if I may ask you. Um, I think back in, I guess around 1959, that's how the student union buildings were um, built. They were built with um, either funds from the student fees or funds from bonds, and that's how they were built at that point in time. And now, in order to do any kind of work on this building, CUNY has to own the building to basically do any renovation and use um, state funds. Definitely, I'm going to add to what was just said, and one of the main reasons why uh, we, the student, decided to go this route was that in the bylaws, we'd make sure that we've, we've set a section that some of the rooms, especially in that building, would not be given out without student involvement to make sure that students do have a right to that building as well, and especially to some of the rooms, not given to faculty or given to use as classrooms and therefore used mainly for student activities. So we did make sure that I was entitled and that was written in because of that we did agree to that. Other questions? Um, second one? We, we did second one. So right. yeah. uh, any other conversation? No? Uh, all those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? Any abstentions? The items are approved. This concludes the report of the Chair of the Committee on Facilities Planning and Management. Thank, Thank you. you, Mr. Chairman. Um, Item number eight, following non-action item. Item number eight, City University of New York policy on freedom of expression and expressive conduct. As indicated on page 24 of the revised board calendar in your meeting books, the policy on freedom of expression and expressive conduct <coughs> is included for informational purposes only to be considered at a later date. And again, let me thank the Chancellor, A, for him for being at the hearing last week and for his leadership on this item. Thank you so much. Item number nine, which is another non-action item, executive committee. Calendar item number nine is being read for informational purposes only. It serves as notice of actions taken by the Board of Trustees Executive Committee on June 6, 2016 of three items recommended by the Chancellor regarding A, the naming of the Made in New York Broadcast Center at the CUNY Graduate Center of Journalism, B, the appointment of Jose L. Cruz as the new president of Lehman College, and C, the appointment of Mary Lou Billick as the new dean of the CUNY School of Law. We congratulate the new president and dean and look forward to meeting them soon. There being no further business, I ask for a motion to go into executive session to discuss collective bargaining and personnel matters. So moved. Do I have a second? Second. Second. Okay, the board will reconvene. Oh. Those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? All right, the board will reconvene in public following the executive session, but we are in executive session right now. Okay, we are back in session and reconvene public meeting. Um, what I'm going to do is to skip for one second to item 15 and take that item first. And then what I'm going to ask is items 10, 11, 12, 13 and 14 to be taken collectively uh, and introduced by trustees DiMartino and trustee Beal. Uh, hmm? Okay, no, that's that's 15. I'm gonna go on the on the combined items. So we will vote on those items. Uh, as one, realizing that they are separate items and realizing that they have separate dates and affect different people. Uh, so let me go to item 15, 
uh, to be, let me call on Vice Chairperson Phil Berry to read <coughs> item number 15. Thank you very much, Chair. Uh, this is a resolution uh, to approve the interim Vice Chancellor for Student Affairs. Uh, resolve that the Board of Trustees approve the appointment of Dr. Christopher J. Rosa to be Interim Vice Chancellor for Student Affairs as of July the 1st, 2016. And a compensation to be recommended by the Chancellor to the Board subject to financial ability. Our explanation is this, that Vice Chancellor for Student Affairs, Frank Sanchez, was recently appointed as president of Rhode Island College. The chancellor is recommending Dr. Christopher J. Rosa to be interim, interim vice chancellor for student affairs. Dr. Rosa is currently the university assistant dean for student affairs, a position he has held since 2008. Previously, Dr. Rosa worked at Queens College where he was affirmative action officer, project director for a special services trio grant, director of services for students with disabilities, and disciplinary officer. He earned a Bachelor of Arts summa cum laude in sociology and the honors program in Western tradition from Queens College, and a PhD in sociology from CUNY Graduate School and the University Center. A published disability studies scholar, Dr. Rosa has served as chair of the executive committee for the United States President's Committee on Employment of People with Disabilities and presently serves as Vice Chair of the Muscular Dystrophy Association's Board of Directors. Uh, Chair, I would like to ask for uh, a second to that. I second. second. <laughs> wow, I was an enthusiastic <laughs> second, okay, let me tell you. Um, do, <laughs> Do we have any discussion on this item? <laughs> All those in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Any abstentions? The item is approved. I'm not going to ask who the most popular person in the room is. Jeez. Thanks, Chairman Thompson. I invited a few friends. <laughs> so, um, the last few days, um, my head and my heart have been spinning uh, with the enormity of the responsibility and the opportunity uh, that lies before us. Um, and as my friends, the students, encourage me, slow your roll and take an opportunity to appreciate the moment. And uh, this is one of the most remarkable moments of my life. Um, anyone who knows me knows that aside from my family and my faith, um, that this, uni this university is the identity that I cherish more than anything else in the world. It's given me everything that is meaningful to me from a world-class education that's imbued me with the spirit of inquiry uh, to a career where I get to do the most remarkable work on behalf of the most remarkable students. Um, and uh, it's given me uh, a, a family, uh, a family of, of committed others who are committed to access and opportunity uh, through higher education. Um, and uh, it's, it's been the most remarkable ride for me. Um, I have so many people to thank, um, but uh, first and foremost, I wanted to thank the Chancellor and Executive Vice Chancellor Rabinowitz for their faith in me and uh, trusting me with this remarkable opportunity. Um, I promise I will treat it with the reverence and the dedication that it demands and deserves and with the joyful spirit um, that I think is required of a remarkable opportunity like this. Um, I thank my colleagues in student affairs on the campuses who pour themselves out each and every day, and I look forward to partnering with them and empowering them to do their best work on behalf of the students that we serve. Um, I, I'm, it's a privilege to be able to partner 
with the university's remarkable faculty in the learning enterprise, um, particularly when it comes to co-curricular learning and experiential learning to prepare students for the workforce of the 21st century. Um, I wanted, I would be absolutely remiss if I didn't thank the remarkable student leaders um, with whom I have the privilege to work each and every day, particularly those in the University Senate, led by Trustee Awaji, the CUNY Coalition for Students with Disabilities, the Ernesto Malave Leadership Academy, and all cross CUNY uh, student groups who challenge me and inspire me each and every day. Um, and I just would like to take a moment of, of additional moment of personal privilege um, just to thank everyone here at this table. Um, when I look around this table, uh, I see assembled truly my, hero, my heroes, the pantheon of CUNY heroes, tremendous leaders who are my mentors, uh, my colleagues, my friends, and my CUNY family. And I love you all for what you've done for me and what you do for all members of our CUNY family. You're remarkable leaders, and thank you for this opportunity. I look forward to learning from you and to continue to lead with you. Thank you. I've been told that uh, this has probably one, been one of the longer meetings yes. uh, that we've had, and I'm sure that I'll be blamed for that, which is fine. <laughs> but in the interest of time, but not to understate how important the next resolutions are, I think that, as I mentioned earlier, uh, when it comes to our labor contracts, long time in coming. And I, would, again, would like to congratulate and thank the Chancellor, his staff, work so hard on this. Uh, the union leadership being at the table and working hard on this also. It was truly a collective bargaining effort. And last but not least, the state and the city for what they've done on this. And again, uh, as mentioned a couple of people before, thank you so much for your work, even some of those who may be in this room. Uh, but uh, what I am going to do is to ask that items 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, and 16 uh, be introduced, and we can just look at them collectively um, by, by uh, trustees DiMartino and Beal. And also, and also realize that on these items, uh, the trustee Ken Sunshine is recused from voting on these collective bargaining Thank you. Thank you, Mr. Chair. I will now present items 10, 11, 12 for your consideration. Number 10, the City University of New York approval of the CUNY classified staff agreements 2009 to 2017, 2010 to 2017. Resolved that the collective bargaining agreement between the City University of New York and District Council 37, AFSCME, AFL-CIO and its affiliated locals for the period November 1st, 2009 through January 31st, 2017 is hereby approved and be it further resolved that the collecting bargaining agreement between the City University of New York and Service Employees International Union, Local 300, for the period August 1, 2009 through October 31st, 2016 is hereby approved and be it further resolved that the collective bargaining agreement between the City University of New York and motion picture projectionists, video technicians, theatrical employees, and Allied Crafts International Alliance of Theatrical and Stage Employees, Local 306, for the period August 1, 2009 through October 31, 2016, is hereby approved and be it further resolved that the collective bargaining agreement between the City University of New York and the New York State Nurses Association for the period December 16th, 2010 through De December 15th, 2017 is hereby approved and be it further resolved that the Chancellor is hereby authorized to, execu to execute these agreements. Explanation. 
the prior collective bargaining agreements between the City of New York and the District Council 37 expired on October 31st, 2009. The prior agreements with Surface Employees International Union Local 300 with motion picture projectionists, video technicians, theatrical employees, and Allied Crafts International Alliance of Theatrical and Stage Employees Local 306 expired on July 31st, 2009. And the prior agreement with the New York State Nurses Association expired on September 10th, 2010. This res resolution approves the respective successor 2009 to 2017 and 2010 through 2017 collective bargaining agreements negotiated between the City University of New York and its blue and white collar classified staff unions identified above. I will now move to resolution number 11. The City University of New York approval of 2009-2017 agreement with Local 384, District Council 37, governing employees at the Educational Opportunity Centers. Resolved that the collective bargaining agreement between the City University of New York and Local 384, District Council 37, covering employees at the Educational Opportunity Centers of Brooklyn, Queens, Manhattan, and the Bronx, for the period November 1st, 2009 through January 31st, 2017 is hereby approved. And be it further resolved that the Chancellor is authorized and directed to execute the collective bargaining agreement with Local 384, District Council 37, governing employees at the Educational Opportunity Centers. Explanation. The prior collective bargaining agreement between the City University of New York and Local 384, District Council 37, governing employees at the Educational Opportunities Centers expired on October 31st, 2009. This resolution approves the successor 2009 to 2017 agreement. And finally, November uh, resolution 12, the City University of New York approval of the 2009 to 2017 agreement with Local 1597, District Council 37, governing employees at the Baruch College Student Center, the Brooklyn College Student Center, and the Queens College Student Center. Resolved that the collective bargaining agreement between the City University of New York and Local 1597, District Council 37, employees at the student centers of Brooklyn College, Baruch College and Queens College for the period November 1st, 2009 through January 31st, 2017 is hereby approved and be it further resolved that the Chancellor is authorized and directed to execute the collective bargaining agreement with Local 1597, District Council 37, governing employees at the student centers. Explanation, the prior collective bargaining agreement between the City University of New York and Local 1597, District Council 37, governing employees at the student centers of Baruch College, Brooklyn College, and Queens College expired on October 31st, 2009. This resolution approves the successor 2009 through 2017 collective bargaining agreement. Trustee Martin will continue. Thank you. Uh, number 13. The City University of New York approval of the 2010-2017 agreement with the Professional Staff Congress, CUNY. Resolved that the collective bargaining agreement between the City University of New York and the Professional Staff Congress, CUNY, for the period October 20, 2010 through November 30, 2017 is hereby approved and be it further resolved that the Chancellor is hereby authorized and directed to execute the collective bargaining agreement with the Professional Staff Congress, CUNY. Explanation. The prior collective bargaining agreement between the City University of New York and the Professional Staff Congress, CUNY, expired on October 19, 2010. This resolution approves the successor 2010-2017 agreement. Um, so a vote on this. Okay. Okay. Do, I, do I hear a second? No. Oh, yeah, you just keep going. Not doing, doing that. Okay. Go good. All right. <laughs> uh, number fourteen. The City University of New York approval of the 2010-2017 Supplemental Agreement with the Professional Staff Congress, 
CUNY covering the educational opportunity centers. Resolved that the supplemental collective bargaining agreement between the City University of New York and the Professional Staff Congress, CUNY, covering the educational opportunity centers for the period October 20, 2010 through November 30, 2017 is hereby approved. And be it further resolved that the Chancellor is hereby authorized and directed to execute the supplemental collective bargaining agreement with the Professional Staff Congress, CUNY, covering employees of the Educational Opportunity Centers. Explanation. The prior supplemental collective bargaining agreement between the City University of New York and the Professional Staff Congress, CUNY, covering the Educational Opportunity Centers expired on October 19, 2010. This resolution approves the successor 2010-2017 agreement. Agreement with International Brotherhood of Teamsters Local 237. Resolved that the collective bargaining agreement between the City University of New York and the International Brotherhood of Teamsters Local 237 for the period September 18, 2009 through December 17, 2016 is hereby approved and be it further resolved that the Chancellor is authorized and directed to execute the collective bargaining agreement with the International Brotherhood of Teamsters Local 237. Explanation. The prior collective bargaining agreement between the City University of New York and the International Brotherhood of Teamsters, Local 237, expired on September 17, 2009. This resolution approves the successor 2009-2016 agreement. So I have motions from <coughs> Trustees Beal and DiMartino on items 10, 11, 12. 13, 14, and 16. Do I have seconds? Second. Yes. Second. Second. Any discussion on these items? Hearing none, those in favor? Aye. 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 Any opposed? And again, with the abstention on these items, or the recusal on these items from Trustee Sunshine, uh, these items are approved. Again, to the staff and the chancellor. Congratulations, everybody. <laughs> Any other further business? <laughs> I'd ask for a motion to adjourn the meeting. So moved. So moved. Those in favor? Aye. We are adjourned. Thank you. <laughs>